Hi guys, my name is Connor. I'm a science fiction, political, and philosophy nerd, a Marine Corps and law enforcement veteran, and today we're going to be breaking down the Hammer and Bolter episode, Double or Nothing. It is the first and only Age of Sigmar episode at this point in the Hammer and Bolter series. It is a little bit bloody, it is a little bit fun, so I'm very excited to bring it to you today. Let's go ahead and get into the opening violence, and then we'll be continuing on with our new format, which is, I bring you the violence, a little bit of uh, important exposition, lore breakdowns, but then if you want to watch, the, and then the the climactic violence of course <laughs> but if you want the entire thing stop being lazy go to warhammer tv give them the five dollars and 99 cents get a vpn and go do it that way if you need to and basically don't complain to me about lore breakdowns or me breaking stuff down that's what we're here for there's plenty of people in the chat who are having fun besides you don't complain don't complain don't be a baby Go spend your five bucks. It's worth it. And for this episode in particular, it's actually quite the increase in quality over what we've seen so far. So I'm really excited to bring it to you. Let's check out the quote, check out the violence, and then we'll break it down a little bit. Lord Celestant, we do not have the numbers to stand against them. <laughs> All right, let's break it down a little bit. So we have the opening quote. Lads, Gorkamorka wants us to go smash up those shiny Yumis over there. No one orders us orcs around. Let's get them. Auric Warbox, Warboss. And of course, the, the quote being a little bit of like a slapsticky funny quote where, uh, you know, nobody orders us around and yet we're taking the orders from Gorka Morka in order to go smash the shiny Yumis. Shiny Yumis are Stormcast, so that's actually going to be super fun for us to kind of break down in a second. But the irony of the quote, of course, being that they're taking they're taking orders from their god while claiming that no one orders them around. <laughs> and Oryx being just a modification of Orcs for this world, which is a little bit more fantasy-based, uh, and as such, they've dressed up some of the language. So, uh, you know, we we get introduced to some Stormcast Eternals, and as somebody who is more of a fan of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, I'm quite unfamiliar with their roles. And uh, what Stormcasts are, are basically revenant mortals brought back to life by the god Sigmar to fight on behalf of humanity. Every time they're brought back a little bit stronger and a little bit faster, and they're imbued with the power of lightning, but with each death and new life, they lose a part of their mortal selves. As they're speaking, their voices crack with a little bit of rumble of thunder. They kind of made them a little bit deistic. And there's Lord Celestant Carinus, the leader of the Stormhost, who is confronted by Knight Questar, uh, Knight Questor, a uh, Hamilcar bear eater. That's where uh, that vowel was supposed to go. <laughs> and so all of this to say, um, I actually want to pause it so I don't get distracted. The point is that these are demigods brought back by the god of this world. And as a result, they're basically, they're joked about to be Sigmarines. So they're, they're this universe's version of space marines where they're stronger, faster, smarter, sexier, all of that kind of stuff. But you'll notice there's women. Stop, stop making my media entertainment political with all these women games workshop. <laughs> Uh, but the point being, there are mortals, just normal human beings who have to deal with the threats of like elves and vampires and orcs and all that kind of stuff. And it is very similar to the Warhammer 40k universe where like the gods of the 40k universe actually parallel into the Age of Sig Sigmar universe. And, uh, you know, you can be a normal human and you can be part of the free cities of humanity within these realms. But um, if you want to be the coolest version of human, then it's cooler to be a Sigmarine or Stormcast Eternal because you're basically hard, strong, fast, and imbued with lightning, and you don't have power armor, literally like it's powered, but your armor can uh, help channel your abilities and your power, which is lightning. So, you know, it's kind of cool. It's a little cheesy. It's not my thing, but, you know, I, I would understand if this was somebody else's thing. And uh, we're... So, Lord Celestin Carinus is the leader of the storm host and that basically means that he's their version of like a captain he's in he's in charge of a hundred uh stormcast eternals who are trying to protect a free city of men um from the auric uh the auric horde that has come to uh slaughter them 
And uh, Night Questor, Hamakar, Bear Eater. The reason why I even bring up the term uh, Night Questor is because while I was looking around on the Games Workshop website, looking at different units, there was a Night Questor, which is basically a Stormcast who doesn't accept the top-down hierarchy of being a part of a Storm host. He basically goes where he's needed in order to fight battles. And that is Hamilcar's role as he announces that he is, uh, you know, one of the most famed champions of Sigmar um, to comedically no recognition from any of the other storm casts and he's actually quite the confident charming smarmy weird and funny character um as he continues to kind of like question whether or not people have uh, heard of his legend <laughs> uh but he offers to take on this threat because the Stormcast, uh, the Stormcast Eternals, the Storm Host, don't have enough to hold off the Oryx in order to save the free city. So, uh, you know, he basically uh, makes an offer that uh, the other Stormcast can't refuse and don't even really want to. <laughs> so let's check that out. Hamukar? Yes. Hamilcar, Bear Eater. Breaker of the Siege of Durenda. Survivor of the Coscan Massacre. Slayer of Balak. Well, regardless, I'm the greatest of all Sigmar's celestial champions. Presence company accepted, of course. If you say so, what are your intentions? Do you believe Sigmar is with us this day? With every fiber of my being. Indeed. Where are you? I'm off to gamble for everyone's lives. <laughs> stop! No time to stop? I have business with your boss. <laughs> the boss don't want to see some Huey Storm get. No, oh, he wants to see me. Uh, which way? Left or right? Uh, uh, that way. He'll break you. I'm sure he thinks so. In fact, I'm counting on it. <laughs> Lovely camp you have here. Very large. Interesting... Uh, smells. <laughs> I hope I'm going the right way. I'd hate to walk into a squig den or something. A squig den might have been better. So uh, basically what we see is we see Hamilcar, the, uh, you know, S Sigmar's greatest champion, BS his way into the encampment by basically acting confidently. He just as easily could have taken an arrow to the dome, but the orcs were probably, or excuse me, the oryx, uh, the oryx were probably curious. And just by acting confidently, he socially engineers his way into the camp by just striding past the guards. And that is something like actually really funny. Uh, body language, or nonverbal communication is a huge part of how humans in particular, but living creatures with some level of social intelligence do communicate. And so by just being nonchalant and non-threatening, rather than uh, starting a uh, an alarm and a perimeter, you know, defense of work and all the orcs uh, attacking him, he basically is able to stride into the camp in order to go confront, uh, confront the orc war boss, who basically says, you're either brave or incredibly stupid. Uh, definitely brave, Hamilcar responds. <laughs> He's actually one of the most comedic and fun uh, characters that I've bumped into really in any of the lore, whether we're talking about Age of Sigmar or we're talking about Warhammer 40k. Well, the Oryx, um, let's go ahead and get this here. The Oryx are a part of the Alliance of Destruction. There's a series of great alliances within the Age of Sigmar uh, universe, and they all have like different roles to play. Uh, for instance, there's the Alliance of Order, which includes elves, humans, and a few other fantasy creatures who all want to maintain order within the many realms of the Age of Sigmar. Uh, not the Age of Sigmar, but the, the realms of Sigmar, I guess. 
And then uh, there's Grand Alliance Death, which is like ghosts and phantoms and vampires and all that kind of stuff. And they want to kill everything within the realms and convert them to gloomy, dreary spirits. And there's the Alliance of Chaos, which, of course, like they reject the, the Order's uh, attempt to create a unified and beautiful world and they want to corrupt it and destroy it. And then there's the Grand Alliance of Destruction, which is made up of orcs, ogres, Gretchen, um, and beasts. And they basically, uh, and giants, and they want to just sow destruction wherever they go. They don't care if it's living or dead. They just love a good scrap. <laughs> and they're led by the great god Kragnos, the end of empires, who is referenced in this speech. And they dominate the realm of Gur, which is one of the many realms in this fantasy universe. So uh, Hamilcar appeals to the orc's sense of ego, um, but he, once again, like nobody knows who he is, to, which is played for comedic effect, uh, or excuse me, is played for comedic effect. And Urgok the Invincible, uh, you know, is basically a name that Hamilcar gives to the chief boss orc, and he wagers that like if he could, uh, if he is defeated in single combat, then he will spread the legend of, uh, you know, Urgok across the realms in order to feed into his reputation, which will get him into the Great Wa, which is like, uh, you know, the orcs uh, Valhalla. It's their afterlife, if I understand it correctly. I don't fully understand all the rules of worshiping gods in uh, Age of Sigmar, but it does seem to follow Warhammer 40k pretty closely in the fact that if you worship your god, they do become more powerful. So the gods of order or the gods of or the, the realms of men worshiping Sigmar probably grants them some power. The Alliance of Destruction serving in the name of Kragnos, uh, the, the end of empires probably makes him stronger and so on and so forth. So <laughs> there's a comedic dismissal of Hamilcar and, uh, you know, basically the even the Stormcasts who are who are watching this uh, this event transpire while they're organizing the uh, while they're organizing the escape of the, the folks in the city. They <laughs> they're laughing it off and they kind of go, oh, well, if he dies, at least, uh, you know, Sigmar will bring him back and maybe reforge him into something more useful <laughs> uh and that kind of brings us to uh the the co confrontation between the auric horde and hamilcar where the auric agrees to the duels but he basically says i've never heard of you who are you i don't give a shit go ahead and fight my champions and if you beat my champions maybe i'll kill you myself hey you yes you are you drowning in plastic crack do you keep buying models and never have them painted? Is your pile of shame bigger than the models you actually have done? The team at Mastermind Models and Miniatures can help, or M3 Studios if you prefer. The team at M3 Studios and their Mastermind slash Master Painter Clay are just like you, addicted to plastic crack and have channeled their addiction into a passion and a profession. They paint kick-ass models to whatever standard or solution you need. Their motto is professional painting services to bring your imagination to life. Trying to just get on the tabletop? M3 Studios can do that. Try to shock and awe your local game store? M3 Studios can do that too. Want a piece of art that your descendants will fight over at your funeral? M3 Studios can do that, and it's easy. Click on the link or in the description, and you can talk to M3 Studios directly about your commission. Tell them the CounterPoints channel sent you, and not only are you guaranteed an awesome paint job at a fair price, but you help the CounterPoints channel continue to grow. What is there to lose? Stop buying models you will never paint, and instead let Clay and the M3 Studios team help you dominate your local friendly game store and show off the best painted models this side of the Mississippi. Start your commission today. And now we'll watch as Hamilcar starts taking on the champions of Urgok. You don't look much like a best boy. Cunning beats brutal any time, and you look as cunning as a moor crusher. <laughs> really, one of your best? <laughs> No, 
Little snuffle, he got away with eating my favorite squig. The way to pleasure to be the hammer of justice. Bonebreaker, show this mouthy storm kid what an oral can do. <laughs> Victory is yours and all that. Victory is my Stormcast, my champion, my win. <laughs> so I gotta say, like, the animation quality is significantly boosted. It's actually really fun and kind of beautiful and well animated and all that kind of stuff. And I, I hope they continue this quality as the series go forward. Uh, but basically what ends up happening is Hamilcar, through yielding to the lower champion... Um, you know, he, he loses, but he doubles his wa wager to basically say that he will increase the legend of Urgok if he's allowed to continue to fight champions. And, uh, the, the orc kind of doesn't care. And so he's like, I'll even give you my Griff Hound, which is like the little griffin dog creature that's been accompanying him, which sweetens the deal and allows the orc to, uh, you know, basically accept the deal. And, uh, you know, basically through this progression, we'll actually just continue on with the violence just so you can see it for yourself because it's pretty great. Of course, you could win even bigger. And you can have my Griff Hound. <gasps> okay. <laughs> you say double? Double! Sorry, old friend. But how about I proclaim you to be the greatest oric in all the realms? And you can have my armor. <laughs> it's forged from Sigmarite, you know. One of the strongest metals that exists. <laughs> I like your spirit. I'll crush it with your body. That's a yes, I take it. Who's next? Blood Claw. Bit. Blood Claw. Idiot. Yield. I yield. Blood Claw. Here. Double or nothing? Nah. I'm bored of watching you get stomped on. Besides, you lose any more teeth, and you won't be able to tell the other storm gets how great I am. That's a shame. I was going to wager you the key to the Stormcast's greatest, greatest power. Pity. I do love a big stakes game. Greatest, greatest power? Yes. The reason we can keep on fighting forever. I'll teach you how to reforge your warriors. Reforge? Picture it, Urgard. You at the head of a great war, rampaging across the realms, surrounded by Oryx charged by celestial lightning. Invulnerable. Invincible. In... Really great. I'll be a god. <laughs> a god as powerful as Kragnos 
or even Sigma himself. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. So, basically, he continues to double the bet, double the bet, double the bet, double the bet, but through his cutting, he's basically able to convince the, the orc, like, you know, hey, there's this stupid, like, everybody thinks he's an idiot. The Stormcast thinks he's an idiot. The, you know, the orcs think he's an idiot. They have no idea who this guy is who walked into their camp and kept getting their ass kicked, but basically they know that they can take and take and take. They've already won. You know, they, they already won his armor. They already won his Griffhound. They already won, uh, you know, his dignity. They already know that even if he dies, like even if they murder him, if he remembers them when he comes back from reforging, uh, <laughs> he'll basically spread the spread the great legend of Urgok, the, the great orc who was able to best him in battle, you know, a, a, an exclaimed champion of uh you know sigmar himself and so as a result like what is there what is there really to lose from the orcs perspective uh you know and there's so much to gain because even if this guy is full of it but they do get the ability to reforge if they're able to gain immortality or channel lightning or bring immortality to their fellow orc hordes then they can compete in the Alliance of Destruction, which is kind of like a cannibalistic self-defeating, you know, if they're anything like 40k works, then they probably fight each other as much as they fight the other orders. <laughs> uh, so what's to lose? Uh, nothing. And what's on the table? Godhood, which the, the Stormcast, while previously human, are the angels or the endowed immortals of a god who are real in this uh, in this universe. Uh, <laughs> so um, he is able to lure the orc onto the battlefield by insisting that basically uh, he can only grant the power of reforging to the specific orc who beats him in battle. And as a result, he's actually able to bait the boss into the duel with the following results. Champions were to beat me. The evacuation of the city is underway. Is he dead? Not yet. Swear your oath. Tell your thunder god I'll have his power soon. I, Hamilcar Bear Eater, swear by Almighty Sigma that if I lose this fight, the winner will learn the secrets of reforging and be as a god bestriding the mortal realms. Looks like he was listening. I certainly hope so. Awfully uncomfortable. Underlings, somewhat unexpectedly, it seems I'm your new boss. This really is terribly uncomfortable. No, not for me. I'll tell you what. 
I'll make to you the same offer I made to... what's his face? Your former boss. I'll give one of you the chance to earn Sigmar's greatest, greatest power. Just one, mind. I'll leave you to sort out who amongst yourselves. Don't forget to let me know how it goes. <laughs> Give them a night to finish killing each other, and you should be fine to go mop up the rest. That's better. Now, I could use some ale. <laughs> All right, so basically, the, this entire piece is about social engineering. He's able to socially engineer his way into the into uh, the Uruk base. He's able to socially engineer the boss into letting him fight champions and eventually fight the boss himself. He's able to continually lose bets, so everybody thinks that he's a buffoon or an idiot, and that he's actually just gambling away his own life to no actual. Uh, benefit of either the Stormcast or the humans. Uh, but then, at the very end, after he's won and he's basically vanquished uh, the Orc boss, he turns all the Orcs uh, against each other by basically saying, I will teach you the power of reforging. <laughs> uh, as long, you know, as long as it's only one of you, which uh, Orcs are very hierarchical and they basically want the, the biggest amongst them to be the leader, the, the strongest one amongst them to be the leader. So there's plenty after the death of a boss who's going to think that they can be the new boss and he incentivizes them killing the crap out of each other in order to try to gain this new power. So, <laughs> so he's able to take through cunning and guile and wit and bravado and balls, he's able to take a situation in which the Stormcast were preparing to fight to the last is a last ditch effort in order to protect a human city who were only going to be able to partially evacuate before the Uruk came and sacked the city. They, he was able to take that entire situation, flip it on its head through uh, social manipulation, get the Oryx to destroy themselves, and then hand a victory over to the Stormcast. So he goes from Hamilcar the Bear Eater, the man of many legends of whom nobody has heard, and a buffoon who's on the verge of gambling away his own life, and in some you know social respects is still kind of like a foolish and buffoonish person, but he ends up handing the Stormcast and humanity a total victory. It's hilarious, it's fun, it's well acted, it's well animated, it's cute, it's weird. And honestly, like, I prefer Warhammer 40k, but this was narratively refreshing. Like, it was refreshing to have a narrative that was fun and funny, despite having a decent chunk of violence and, uh, you know, a decent chunk of, like, fun in the middle of it. So it, it was super fun, but uh, my editor, Taze, and I, we've been discussing, like, what do people come to the channel for? They come for insight, right? If you really wanted to watch this piece on your own, you could pay $5 on Warhammer uh, TV and go watch it on your own. If you wanted lore, you can probably find better researched lore videos out on the internet. So what are you looking for? You're looking for insight. You're looking for depth. You're looking for all that kind of stuff. And uh, I was trying to think of what would be the theme of this piece if I was to pull it out. And it's the fact that your heroes aren't necessarily who you uh, who you expect. And there's many ways to be a hero. So, uh, you know, the Stormcast in the, in the original uh, beginning of the episode... They were showing the traditional way to be a hero, thinking specifically militarily, thinking specifically uh, from, you know, a, a tactics uh, and technical side of things. How do we win the battle, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas Hamilcar thinks in a completely different in sideways social social engineering mind uh, mindset. But as a result, what have been what would have been the result if the Stormcast had fought a traditional battle and lost and then lost the city like Tens of thousands of humans would be dead. An entire Stormcast Storm host would have been wiped out and would have had to been re reforged. And in that reforging, they would have lost a part of themselves. So all in all, just a massive loss for humanity. Whereas through thinking a little uh, differently, through thinking a little bit crabbed, Hamilcar actually reverses fortunes 
and hands a victory to the Stormcast. And so that that's where there, there's many kinds of heroes. And I'm reminded, uh, not that I've read Syphus Kane, but uh, Syphus Kane is supposed to be a 40K series that's supposed to be similarly darkly comedic, where a guy who is constantly trying to avoid danger through avoiding danger ends up becoming a legend in the Imperium. And by becoming a legend in the Imperium, he's constantly sent on dangerous missions that he doesn't want to participate in. But through intelligence and his own instinct for survival and his cunning and his wit, he's actually able to continue handing the Imperium victories. And I'm happy that there's like a, an archetype here that's also being played to. So yeah, uh, it, just because you're cunning or manipulative or you have social engineering skills or you're a little weird or you're a little funny doesn't mean you can't be a hero and sometimes that means that you can do heroic shit better than the traditionally heroic people and if, if there was any theme that i was trying to pull out of this actually fun like 20 to 30 minute romp uh with speckled with blood and lightning uh that that would be my takeaway <laughs> so um my name is connor i did have a blast uh, I'm a science fiction, political, and philosophy nerd, a Marine Corps and law enforcement veteran. Um, you know, this is uh, the YouTube channel Counterpoints. We love breaking down the very finest in violence and politics and bringing it to you. So if you would like to subscribe, please subscribe. Please ring the bell. That way you can uh, keep up with our latest content. We do go live on uh, Fridays, generally speaking, about to go live in a few minutes now. And uh, we generally do uh, debate politics as well as checking out 40K and other violent media. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please come check us out. Like, share, subscribe, dislike all that YouTube nonsense. Catch you in the next one. Bye.